So I just finished watching the rivalry game between the Buccaneers and the Carolina Panthers in the NFC South showdown up in Charlotte. And the game ended up being a little bit more interesting than I thought it was going to be after about two quarters or so when the Panthers jumped out to a 35-7 lead. But in this video, we're going to talk about the things that the Buccaneers did today and the Carolina Panthers did today. We're starting right now. What up, dude? What's up, everybody? It's Aaron Lucky here at the Next Third Bond Sports Talk. You guys know it's a channel I might not tell you what you want to hear, but I'm definitely going to tell you what you need to hear. And of course, I give recap and analysis of the best division in the NFL, the NFC South. So if you want to see more videos about the Bucks, the Panthers, the Saints, or the Falcons, make sure you hit that subscribe button below, guys. Go ahead and do it. Give the video a thumbs up while you're at it, man. Show some love. But hey, real quick, let me know down below in the comments. After this game, Ryan Fitzpatrick, four touchdowns, two interceptions. Do you think it's time to go back to Jameis Winston? I know they were talking about it. Do you think he played bad enough where they can go back to Jameis Winston now or later? And for Panthers fans, what did you think about how the defense played, man? They kind of got some turnovers. They balled out, got some sacks. Let me know what you thought about the defense overall and how they play, use the playmakers on offense down below in the comments. The Carolina Panthers won their 10th straight game at home at Bank of America Stadium. After the first drive where they went three and out, they scored on five straight possessions, jumping out to a 35-7 lead, and the offense was pretty much rolling from there. And it looked like it was going to get ugly for a minute because after that overthrow by Fitzpatrick and the interception to the 10-yard line, once again, the defense got a turnover and set the offense up to get things rolling just like last week against the Ravens. So everything kind of started to snowball after that. And the onslaught was on in the first half. 35 points is a Panthers record for points in the first half. Today, it just seems like Fitzpatrick just wasn't sharp. Um, he, he, he didn't really make bad decisions per se, but some of those passes, the overthrows, and then the last interception he had was just kind of a prayer. But he didn't seem as sharp today with his uh, with his rifle when he was throwing around today. And he just never seemed comfortable because the Panthers D-line pretty much did a good job of getting pressure. And they pretty much had their way up front. You got to give credit to the Panthers DBs in secondary, uh, Dante Jackson and James Bradbury. James Bradbury, I had my doubts on him. Uh, if you missed my video about what matchup to watch for, I'll link it up in the uh, card. But I had my doubts on him versus Mike Evans. Um, because Mike Evans is a, is a, was one of the top 10 receivers in the league, and James Bradbury, I'm not sure, but I think James Bradbury matches up fairly good with physical receivers like Mike Evans versus a, a big body guy like Alshon Jeffrey, who we saw give him some trouble, but he got to give him credit for what he did. I think Mike Evans might only had uh, one or two catches in the game, and it was it was pretty much locked down. He was, he was getting involved, being physical with uh, Evans, and uh, uh, breaking up a lot of different passes. And he got to give Bradbury that credit. Of course, Dante Jackson got his fourth interception of the year, making his statement for rookie of the year. He had lots of good tackles. He played pretty good there. The Panthers defense overall did an awesome job. When you hold the NFL's number one total offense, to just over 300 yards, you're doing something right, you know, because they have been rolling all year no matter who was at quarterback. However, the Panthers did a good job of shutting that down, starting with the run game, only holding them to 80 yards total rushing, and keeping uh, Fitzpatrick to only a, se a season low on passing yards. You couple that with three sacks and two turnovers, you got yourself a good game by your Panthers defense. For the Buccaneers, they continue to dig these holes for themselves, and it, 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 your defense isn't good enough to be able self to dig yourself that type of hole. The offense has to be a lot more consistent. And Fitzpatrick said it in his post game conference, they're just not a very consistent team right now. I mean, you start off uh, slow, you shoot yourself in the foot, and then for some stretches, you look like a beautiful team. You're getting stops on defense, coupled with an uh, offense that's running pretty smooth and moving the ball at will. And you just can't do that consistently. You have to be able to do that consistently for four quarters. That's the difference between good teams and great teams. And right now, Bucks aren't being consistent, which is why their record is three and five. And the defense in the third quarter was superb. And then once OJ Howard and Adam Humphreys were pretty much rolling and eating all game, they found something they liked and they found a matchup they liked. And Fitzpatrick kept taking advantage, kept taking advantage, kept taking advantage. The thing about the Buccaneers is they have a ton of weapons across the board. Not too many teams in the NFL have enough DBs and linebackers and secondary that's uh, 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 good enough to keep up with guys like that. I mean, you got Evans, Deshaun, Goodwin, Humphreys, Bray, Howard, that's six guys, and it's just kind of hard to cover all those guys because Fitzpatrick spreads the ball around, and all these guys can make plays and take advantage of different matches, and that's what Humphreys did pretty much all game. He was a problem 
all game for the Panthers. Kudos to the Buccaneers for definitely making that comeback, though. You knew they were going to fight. They did it last week and uh, uh, tied the game up with the uh, Bengals before they ended up losing by a field goal. And this week, they got it back down to seven after being down 35-7 early in the first half. So you got to give them credit for that comeback. I wasn't expecting this many points to be scored. However, um, it kind of makes, looking back now, it kind of makes sense. Of course, uh, based on where the Buccaneers' defense is ranked, and of course, the Panthers tend to take their foot off the gas for some reason and make games a lot more interesting than they have to be. But next week is going to be tough games for both teams. The Buccaneers will be back at home against the Washington Redskins, who are coming off of a loss and embarrassment to the Atlanta Falcons, one of our division opponents, and they're going to be hungry to kind of prove what they can do. They have a souped up secondary, however, they were taken advantage of today um, by Matt Ryan and the, and the Falcons, but they're going to be hungry. And on the other hand, you have the Panthers, who are going to be on a short week on Thursday, traveling up to Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. It's going to be tough. I mean, Pittsburgh, they got a win today over the Baltimore Ravens. They had a, they had a pretty hard fought game there however always traveling on a Thursday is always tough for the road team because you don't get a chance to recover and game plan like you want to but we'll see what happens there but you guys let me know what you thought about the game down below in the comments don't forget to subscribe to the channel and of course I, I give that recap and analysis the best recap and analysis of the whole NFC South the best division in the league so if you want to see more videos make sure you tune in I appreciate you guys watching I'll see you in the next video peace